Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about issue number 2 of Judgment Day, which is part 4 of the Judgment Day event, written by Kieran Gillen. But before we dive into the story, I want to ask you a favor, if you enjoy this video, please leave a like and a comment to help the channel grow. So with that said, this issue opens in a strange way, because the first thing we see is six completely different individuals living their everyday lives, all with their own political views. Now these beliefs range from having complete disdain for mutants to wishing to be able to protect them from any form of harm. But no matter what they believe in as a person, each of their lives is important and will play a bigger part later in this event. For on the following page, we pick up on Krakoa with the Hex rigging havoc upon the island, with both Exodus and Jean Grey leading the vanguard against the invaders. Now, with Exodus's Omega level abilities, he was able to deal a deadly blow to the Hex by the name sign, the Mimitor. So with the Colossus Eternal crashing down to the ground below, Jean Grey reaches out to Cyclops, as he was currently leading the other arm of Krakoa's defense. But unlike the two Omega level mutants, his squad wasn't faring as well against the Eternal's onslaught. For Rika, the Centaurus Hex was causing a lot of trouble for our heroes. Until on the very last panel of the page, Captain America's shield enters the shot as some very unlikely reinforcements have arrived on the scene for the Avengers descended from the sky. Now, despite their good intentions, some mutants were reluctant to accept their help for Exodus insisted that he wanted them to leave because this fight in his eyes was a mutant's issue. But unlucky for him, during a time of war, the war captains take the lead and with magic all for the Avengers helping them, Exodus had no choice but to accept her wishes. For on the surface of Krakoa, both Cyclops and Captain America join their hands in solidarity, because no matter how bleak the situation was, both heroes faced much worse together in the past. So as the fight waged on, we skip over to Avengers Mountain with Tony Stark, Sinister, Ajax, and Makari trying to find the best method to create the new god. For with this new celestial, this holy war could be quickly put to an end. But in order to pull it off, they will need a super genius and a whole lot of luck on their side. For this task wouldn't be an easy one, but one they have to complete if they want to have any hopes of ending the chaos. So speaking of chaos, we switch over to Cap and Cyclops formulating a plan, for the majority of the mutants on Krakoa are non-combatives and would need help getting to safety during the war. So Cyclops proposes that Captain America and his Avengers focus on the Hex as well as helping as many people as possible, while only the mutants deal with protecting the resurrection process. So with that said, Cap couldn't help but to notice that despite the dire situation they are in, Cyclops was still hesitant to share their island's greatest secret. Which Cyclops responded back by saying, How could you blame us, given all that has happened? Which to Cyclops' credit, is a good point. So as the citizens are rushed down into the vaults for safety, the Joint Task Force pushes back the Hex threat into the oceans surrounding Krakoa. So with heavy hitters delivering cataclysmic blows to the Eternals, Namor spots an opening to land a devastating strike. So with a weak point exposed, we skip over to the Philippines where we see massive tsunamis forming that can threaten to eradicate the shorelines, as well as whipping out countless human lives. So with that impending doom on the horizon, Cyclops tell the Avengers to hurry and leave in order to save the very same humans who wish them harm. So with the Avengers conducting a full-on retreat, Exodus makes sure to point out to the Council that the Avengers are abandoning them in their time of need, without knowing the full context of the withdrawal. So with the appearance of the Avengers running away, we see the misinformation spread like wildfire as Destiny and Nightcrawler look on in disappointment. So as the war continued, we skip over to the future architects that will soon be responsible for crafting a new god, but before they could accomplish said goal, several items had to be gathered, and processes had to be completed in order to pull it off. For Tony Stark and Ajax went to retrieve Eris Hem, the judge's thumbprint, as Sinister searched for any debris from the shattered fragmented of the Heart of Dreams, from back when he hacked the mind of the Dreaming Celestial. And as for Makari, she sought out the Asgardian destroyer that was created by Odin to fight against the Celestials in the far past. And following that, 
we see Circe gathering all the other rogue Eternals and travel to Lemuria in order to perform something called a seance to gather testimony from the slaughtered, for the deviant city faced more celestial wrath than any other location on Earth. Now the reason why that is essential to their plan is because they want to add this to the heart of their new creation because their ultimate goal is to make a better god. Because at the end of the day, they didn't desire just another celestial to cast judgment, but what they needed was one who would act as they wish. For we get this narration from that celestial they are striving to create in their own image, because if any one person could be considered the father to this new celestial, it would be Tony Stark. Because Tony Stark's nervous system was used as a blueprint to follow, due to the fact his body still remembers the time he was possessed by the power cosmic as well as his ability to pilot the dead celestial back during the King in Black. So with that established, we cut back over to the front lines where we see Exodus gearing up for a major attack after breaching the Hex's armor. Because through that breach, information about them started to leak out. We find out some of their names, we also learn that they are all sisters, and finally, and most importantly, we learn that Phoebe was healing sign. And with this knowledge, Exodus states, one who needs to be healed can be killed, and just like that, he drives himself into Sign's heart and unleashes a massive telekinetic blast as he tears at the internal essence of his tormentor. But strangely enough, in her final moments, he hears Sign's voice simply say, please don't. As both Exodus and Sion explode in a gigantic blast. So with one hex officially down, the people of Krakoa cheered as they believed they only had five more to attend to. So in times of war, dead mutants are only gone briefly, as they are instantly added back to a queue of 15 million. But as you may have guessed, warriors that are used to save their paradise are prioritized first to be brought back. For there is no need for peaceful mutants during wartime. While at the same time, inside a pocket dimension, the machine does what it has done for a million years. But one of the key differences between the two processes is that when Exodus is brought back, his mind picks up where it was during his last backup, and because of that he has to be briefed by a psychic before returning to battle. Which allows him not to remember anything of the conflict and painful manner of his passing, will sign, the Mimitor remembers everything. Because we learned during the Eternals comic line that a human life is required to bring back an Eternal. So with that knowledge, we see one of the six humans that we first met on the first page instantly fall dead as their life energy was traded for sign to return. So with the war growing in intensity, we quickly jump over to Fastos finishing up the final touches and creating their new god as the four masterminds behind this project debates if doing this is a good idea in the first place. So with that said, Tony of all people was having second thoughts, but they were quickly put to rest by Ajax as she reassures him that they are doing the right thing. So as the war continues to destroy its way through Krakoa, the mutants learned how to take down the Hex, but unfortunately, the Hex also learned how to do the same in return. For Exodus was eradicated before he could perform a repeat of the Big Bang attack. So with Exodus back off the board, Jean Grey reaches out to Scott to ensure that the non-combatives was safely tucked away in the vault. Which he confirms the people are indeed safe, as well as fills her in on a secret mission that involves the X-Men infiltrating the Eternals' armories so they can cut the Hex's power supplies. Now, much like the battle between Uranos and Legion, this event will also be covered in a future issue, but anyways getting back to the story. Out from the sky, Sign, the Mimitor, comes crashing down, with revenge on her mind, as she goes straight for the island of Krakoa itself. So with a shocking escalation in tactics, the mutants are trapped between two impossible choices. For on one hand, if they focus on Sign and save the island then the other hex will break into the vault and kill the citizens. But if they save the citizens, then Sign would destroy the island. So with all hope lost, the mutants pray for God to help, and to their surprise, their prayers were answered for the new celestial came online. And once it emerged from the earth, its first decree was that the battle would cease immediately. So because a word of a celestial supersedes everything for an eternal, the hex was forced to stop and return home. So with the day seemingly being saved, Tony and his team cheered, for they believed they have averted a major disaster, but little did they know, things were about to go left. As in a twist of fate, the new god started to address the people of Earth saying, You are bickering children who ruined this planet. 
you have acted with unrelenting unkindness to one another. So because of that, you leave me no options, for this will be your judgment day. You have 24 hours to justify yourselves, because you will be judged individually as well as a collective. So if more people are judged just, than wicked, then you all may live, but if the reverse is true, then there will be no tomorrow. So with that said, issue number 2 of Judgment Day and part 4 of the Judgment Day event comes to an end. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video and please don't forget to leave a like and a comment if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.